All right, folks, we're just about there. We're going to come back again to another translation. So those transformations that we've done with quadratics, we did them with exponentials. Now we're doing it with sine, so our trig function. So let's recap what we've already learned before we get into some of this stuff. So let's look. The sine function, remember, is sine of x. X is an angle measured in degrees. It's a periodic function. So that's what this beautiful little curvy looks like. Okay. The sinusoidal function is a type of periodic function created by transformations of sine x. So that's where you get this lovely wave. The equation of the axis is the horizontal line halfway between the minimum and the maximum. So to get our axis, remember we've been doing this, right? We take our maximum minus our minimum and we divide it by 2. So here I have a max, I have a minimum, and then this line here is my axis. So it's right in the middle. So my amplitude goes up 2 and comes down. So my amplitude takes me to the maximum. is the same distance from the axis as my minimum. Okay. Amplitude is the distance from the axis to either the maximum or the minimum. So here's my amplitude there. So I put it just in a separate picture to figure out our amplitude. It's almost the same thing, only this time we're going to plus our maximum and our minimum. And we're going to divide it by 2. So our amplitude is there. Amplitude is here. Okay. So here I just have my general sine curve. So the period, so from 0 up to 360, so there's my period. That's the length of one cycle, right? Length of one cycle. So sine itself, before we start playing with it, is 360 degrees. My maximum value is here. So that's 1. My minimum value is here. So that's at negative 1. The equation of the axis... So my axis is directly in the middle, so let's see, 4 and 4, yep, so it's right in the middle. So that's on the x-axis, so when y is 0. My amplitude, let's just use another color, I've used a lot of blue here. Amplitude is 1, because that's my maximum. Amplitude, notice it's here as well, is 1. So my amplitude is 1. My domain... So x is any real number. I'm allowed any angle I want. Okay, all angles are allowed. All angles allowed. Right, that's why there's no restrictions on my domain. Okay, the range is definitely restricted. So my range has to go between my minimum and my maximum. And then the five key points when we go to graph all these things, well, I've got 0, 0. I have 91. I have 180, 0. I have 270, negative 1. And last but not least, I've got 360, 0, because that's when it starts to repeat itself again. So these are the points we're going to worry about when we go to graph it, okay? So quadratics, we had our step pattern. Exponentials, we kind of had our swoosh with our asymptote. Here we've got these very important five key points. So let's do it. Let's try. Remember, when we add a value to the end, of the equation. So when I have something that looks like y equals sine x plus c, that's going to... Oh, oh, I'm backwards. Okay, so if I have a d value, so that's inside the bracket, that's going to slide me left and right. So that's going to be a horizontal translation. Okay, so that's when I see a y equals, sorry, sine x minus d. So if it's a minus inside, it's going to the right. If it's a plus, then that means d is really negative, so it's going left. Okay. If I have a c on the outside, so that's my vertical translation. 
So that's when I see something like y equals sine x plus c, so not inside the brackets. So if it's a plus c, it's going up. If it's a minus c, it's going down. So you're either going to add or subtract your c. So let's do a few examples to see how this works. And because this is a complicated thing, I've given us a table with those key points that we want to make sure we know. So remember, our key points are 00, 0 91, 180, 0, 270, negative 1, and 360, 0. Okay, those are my key points. This scenario here, I've got g of x is equal to sine of x minus 3. So I'm not doing anything to my x values, so they're all going to stay the same. I am going to take my y values, and I'm going to subtract them 3. Because in this scenario, I have a vertical translation down 3. So my x values are not going to change. Okay, they stay the same. So I've got 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. But my y values, I'm now going to drop it by negative 3. So I'm now going to do 0 minus 3 gives me a negative 3. 1 minus 3 gives me a negative 2. 0 minus 3 gives me a negative 3. Negative 1 minus 3 gives me a negative 4. And 0 minus 3 gives me a negative 3. So my new points, let's keep them, I don't know, let's go blue. They're going to be 0, negative 3, 90, negative 2, 180, negative 3, 270, negative 4. That's a 0, by the way. And 360, negative 3. So let's draw them. So I now have a point at 0, negative 3. Oh my, this isn't going to fit on my grid at all. Okay, now we've got a grid that's going to work. So let's see, let's draw our points. So 0, negative 3, 90, negative 2, 180, negative 3, 270, negative 4, and 360, 0. So what we're going to do is we're just going to want to try and make this just as curvy as we can. And there you go. So yes, it keeps going. So yes, it's got arrows. We're just drawing it between 0 and 360 for right now. Okay. In terms of the domain and the range, we do have to take everything into consideration. So domain is always, oops, x is any real number. No restriction. Range definitely has a restriction. So y is any real number such that, let's see, our smallest number is going to be negative 4, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to our new maximum, is up at negative 2. And then the equation of our axis, well, we can calculate it, or we can just read it off the fact that our axis is directly in the middle. So there's my amplitude of 1. Here's my other amplitude of 1. And my axis goes right down the middle. So my axis of equilibrium is happening at y is equal to negative 3. And there we go. Okay, next one. So here I've got sine bracket x minus 60. So because it's in the bracket, that means I'm doing a horizontal, horizontal translation and because it's minus, that means we're going to go to the right, 60 degrees. So that means when I'm calculating, I'm going to take my x, and I'm going to go to the right, 60 degrees. So instead of this point being at 0, it's now going to be at 60 degrees. Instead of this one being at 90, I'm going to add 60 to it, and my x value is now going to be at 150. So let's keep going. Take each x value. We're going to add that 60 because we're going to the right. And what's that? 240. 270 plus 60 gives me 330. And last but not least, 360 plus 60 will give me 420 degrees. Now my y values never change. So it's still going to be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So my y values aren't changing. I'm not doing anything extra outside of it. So my new transfer point is going to be at 60, 0, 151, 240, 
0, 330, negative 1, and, oops, sorry, 420, 0. So my new point, 60, 0, 151, 240, 0, 330, negative 1, and, oh, it's just off my graph. We'll stick it right there, 420. So again, we're going to connect our dots in a nice curvy, so the top one kind of looks like a dome, bottom one kind of looks like a bowl, and there you have it. There is g of x equals sine bracket x minus 60 degrees. Domain, there is no restriction, so x is any real number. My range, y is any real number such that we have not changed the minimum, so it's still negative 1, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to our maximum, which is positive 1. Okay, so let's not forget our max is here, our minimum is here, and that's what sets our restrictions, minimum, maximum. And the equation of the axis of the curve, so the axis of equilibrium, uh, axis of symmetry, well, we haven't gone up and down, so it's still going to be that same. Y equals 0, because it's my x-axis. Good. Okay, we're doing really well. All right, so just a little bit more to go here. Let's do a combination one. So in this case, I have a D value in here. So I'm going to have a horizontal... translation and since it's a plus it's going to go to the left 45 degrees so that means I'm going to take my x values and I have to minus 45 degrees from them and I also have a c value here which means I have a vertical translation up to so my y values, I'm going to have to plus 2 to those. So I've got a bunch of things happening here. So let's figure it out. 0, 0. Well, 0 minus 45 is 45. 90 minus 45, oops, 90. Minus 45 gives me, uh, oops, that's a negative 45. Positive 45. 180 minus 45 will give me 135. 270 minus 45 gives me 225. 360 minus 45 gives me 315. So there's my new x values. My new y values are going to be 0 plus 2 gives me 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is negative 1. And 0 plus 2 gives me 2. So my new points that I'm going to be graphing are at 45 2, sorry, negative 45, positive 45, 3, 135, 2, 225, what? Oh my, I'm doing typos left, right, and center. 2 minus 1 gives me a positive 1. Goodness gracious me. Positive 1. And 315 and 2. So let's draw our points. So we've got negative 45, 2, 45, 3, 135, 2, 225, 1, 315, 2. So again, draw your curvy. So the top one kind of looks like a dome. Bottom one kind of looks like a bowl. Oh, look at that. It's almost like I knew how to draw a curve equals sine bracket x plus 45 degrees plus 2. So there's my transformed function. So my domain is still x is any real number. There is no restriction. Just because I only draw one of the curves doesn't mean it doesn't keep going. Right? I just have to draw the one. My range, so y is any real number such that, what's my new minimum? My new minimum is 1. Less than or equal to y, less than or equal to, what's my max? 3. And last but not least, where's that center line gone? So my center line goes right through all these dots that I've got in a row. And my center line is going through y equals 
2. Hey, look, it's my C value. Look at that. Y equals 2. Done. Okay, last example, folks. Now I'm going to give you the scenario. You have to write the equation. Mmm, dear me. So, right now we've been dealing with sine of x minus d plus c. So remember, this is my horizontal translations. This is my vertical translation. So let's see what the question is giving me. So y equals, so we've got a horizontal tra translation of 20 degrees to the right. So that means it's going to be x minus 20 degrees and a vertical translation of 3 units up. So plus 3. Okay. Let's try the last one. y equals sine bracket x minus d plus c. So remember that's our sideways. C is our up and our down. So what are we given? Horizontal translation of 35 degrees to the left. So remember left is a plus 35 degrees. And a vertical translation of 5 units down. So minus 5. Because that's down. And that's it. That's all it is, folks.